Hello everyone. Hello and welcome to the BMET virtual open event. We will take you on a journey to explore the world of BMET and the courses we are on offer at the college. My name is Jimmy and some of you might recognise me from attending events in your school to promote the courses we offer across our three colleges which are Matthew Barton College, James Watt College and Sutton Caulfield College. So guys just a quick shout out before we start. If you have any hearing impairments or learning difficulties or would like a transcript of the event today please email ask at bmet.ac.uk. So guys, in this morning, what we'll have is, you'll hear from some of our subject specialists, who will tell you more about our courses on offer at Matthew Bolton College. In subject areas such as math, uh, foundation learning, sorry, uh, English and maths, and also ESOL as well. We also have our student experience team on hand to support us throughout our online experience too, if you've got any questions about financial support, or travel, or any of the queries like that. Okay, folks? Next thing then guys, so if you have any questions for us today and like to get them answered, please use our Q&A function below. As you guys can see on the screen there, if you just have a little Q&A sign, you can use that to get all your questions in and we'll get them answered as soon as possible. Okay. So now guys, I'm gonna pass you over to Nahid, Daryl, Georgina and Karanjit who will talk to you today about our foundation learning courses, English and Maths and also ESOL. First up, we've got Nahid. Nahid, over to you. The foundation learning pathways are an opportunity to develop your life skills and independence while working towards a career pathway. This route can encourage you to develop your employability skills, time management, confidence, communication, and research skills to prepare you for the world of work. Your day-to-day -day tasks could include problem solving in the workplace, cooking, and cleaning skills, finance management, IT and communication alongside working towards a functional skills qualification. BMET offers qualifications ranging from entry level one up to level one. After completing your level one qualification, you will be able to progress onto a level two vocational program in a pathway of your choice. So we can help you with your English and maths and this will help you in getting a job in future. And that's it for me, thank you very much. I'll pass it on to my colleague, Daryl. Hi, thank you, Nahid. Hi, my name's Daryl. I um, teach GCSE English at Matthew Bolton campus. Um, we offer GCSE English and Maths um, for anybody who hasn't gained qualifications up to uh, grade four or above. Um, English and Maths, as we know, are essential qualifications for work and for further study. Um, and you can study English and Maths alongside a vocational course of your choice if you meet the entry requirements. Georgina or carry on. I'm Georgina. Um, I am a functional skills maths tutor and we offer functional skills maths courses geared towards learners age 19 plus and you'll be required to complete an initial assessment. Um, so that we can direct you to the most appropriate course for your needs. And um, we offer from entry two to level two maths. And um, we have courses that run for the whole academic year and those that run for half a year. The intensive course is 17 weeks, one day a week uh, for five hours. And the long course is um, 34 weeks, half a day for two and a half hours. And we also have evening classes for two and a half hours. So as you can see, we have daytime courses and evening courses. So there should be something there that will meet your needs. Thank you from me. And I'll hand you over to Kieran. who will tell you about ESOL. Thank you, Georgina. Um, so with ESOL, um, I teach at Matthew Bolton on the ESOL and functional skills. So just to go through um, with the ESOL courses, um, they are for... Um, people who speak English as a second language. Um, the courses um, allows you to build up on your English skills and also gain confidence while you're on the course and hopefully make new friends as well in, your, in the same situation. Um, the course will help you to improve your spoken English um, as well as your reading and writing skills as well. Um, you will develop social skills and also team working skills, which will then help you to hopefully uh, find a job and also continue with your further studies as well. 
um, you will be assessed and enrolled uh, before you start onto the course. Um, so it normally it starts with a spoken um, speaking and listening um, exercise first of all initially during enrollment and then from there we, we see which um, course is suitable for you. Um, in terms of uh, what's offered, we offer from pre-entry um, courses through to entry level and then um, the highest is on to level two. Uh, courses are for a year um, but it's split into three sections so um, there's 12 weeks of speaking and listening, 12 weeks of reading and then 12 weeks of writing. Um, so we will assess you at each level um, as the course goes through. Um, learners can go on to functional skills courses, which we have a lot of um, learners doing, but when they got on to, when they complete a level one or level two ESOL course, um, and some even do go on to GCSE and also other vocational courses as well. Um, just to go back to functional skills English, um, because that's what I teach as well. Um, as Georgina said about the maths, um, we also offer a year long course, but also intensive courses, which are for four months. Um, we cover from entry level through to uh, level two. Um, we cover speaking, listening, reading and writing. And that's the three parts that you're assessed on um, exam wise. Uh, most learners progress on to GCSE and also vocational courses. Um, and again, you are assessed beforehand to make sure that you're um, involved into the right course. Thank you. That's enough from me. Thank you very much, Kieran, and everybody else that's spoken today. Let me just come back onto myself, back on the screen now. So guys, live Q&A. We had a bunch of questions come in so far. Cut off the press, let's have a look. So the first question is, how do I get an interview at BMAT? Really simple. How do I get an interview at BMAT? Who wants to answer that question for us? Um, so to get an interview, um, obviously to apply online beforehand um, and from there we can, um, under the current climate, we can write to you and get back to you as soon as possible, inviting you for an interview and hopefully an assessment at the same time. Thank you very much. Okay, the next question is, how hard are the tests for, is it, is it BKSB, from what I heard of before in the past, BKSB for the ESOL, is it, is it difficult to test, is it, is it, re is it really easy? Um, we don't tend to use the BKSB for um, ESOL. We initially do a speaking listening assessment, so which is a series of questions. Um, and then from there, we, we kind of um, go through and decide which level is appropriate for you because we normally start with speaking and listening courses first. But I think from September, we may have some reading and writing courses available. Um, not sure about that, but it's possible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Come back over to myself now. Okay. I'm just going to click off that. We're going to go back to the top. Uh, okay. Here we go. So if we do not meet the entry requirements, do we need to reseat the exam? So I'm guessing that's going to be a wider question to all the, the areas that we've covered today. I'll say that again. If we do not meet the entry requirements, do we need to reseat the exams? Whatever exams are available for functional skills, maybe, or something else? You want to take that question for us? In regards to GCSE English, um, you can reset if your teacher thinks um, that you're capable of uh, making progress in the academic year until you get uh, the grade four, which is the equivalent to the old grade C on the old um, grading system. Can anyone add anything else about functional skills? Well, at the beginning of the year, the entry requirement would be for you to take the initial assessment. So then if you didn't pass that initial assessment, there wouldn't be an exam to take. So it would be a matter of going away and practicing your skills, maybe um, going online and doing some self-directed learning to improve those skills and then trying again for the um, initial assessment. So if it's at the start of the course, then um, you will, your skills would have to be at a level um, to one of the courses that we offer. So perhaps like the lowest course that we'd be offering would be like, say, entry two max. So if you didn't reach the entry two level at um, the initial assessment, then you would have to go away and do some self-directed learning or practice maybe using YouTube or 
um, some online resources or something and then try again at the next enrollment date. Thanks, Georgie. I think that's answered that question perfectly. Thank you very much. The next question, guys, I think, again, another general question. Um, I'm leaving school at 16. It's not looking like I'm going to get the greatest GCSE results. What's my next option? Is it maybe a foundation learning course for me? Is it going to be a functional skills course and do something alongside? Um, who, who can answer that one for us? Any students who don't get the good grades they wanted will need to reset their English and maths. And so this could be functional skills or GCSE reset. So this will depend on the GCSE grade and an initial assessment when starting the college. So for example, if you get grade three, then you can reset your GCSE exams again. If you get lower grade, like grade one and grade two, so you will be studying functional skills. So there's always something available for you to progress on to. So yeah, you will get a chance um, for your, during the initial assessment, we'll have a look uh, at your grades and at your initial assessment and we can offer you something definitely. Thanks, Nahi. Thank you very much. Okay, that's answered your question. So next question, guys, next question is, are all our courses 35 weeks long? That's a good one. Are all our courses 35 weeks long? Again, that's gonna be a general question. Should we say, Daryl, do you wanna go first with that one? Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah, so as um, the other my colleagues mentioned, um, <coughs> there are some short courses for functional skills and ESOL, um, but the GCSE course will be 35 weeks. It will last all of the academic year. Thank you, thank you. Anyone else want to pop in there? Foundation Learning tool? Foundation Learning is a course for 16 to 18 year old who want to improve on their grades or with their English, maths, ESOL, vocational studies. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So guys, next question then. So my son is very nervous at interviews and I think the test may make him slightly anxious. Uh, how can we help, how can BMET help him with that at all? So I'll say that one more time. My son is very nervous and I think the test will make him really anxious. How can we help him with this? Hi, I'm Vicky Robbins. I'm the support coordinator at Matthew Bolton College. Um, so for young people that are very nervous about their assessments um, and any sort of enrolment um, queries that they have, we can also offer discreet and support in those sessions. So we can look to arrange something whereby you come in um, not with everybody else although due to covid the the, the 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 campus isn't going to be as busy as it usually would um we do still understand that there will be those students that have got anxiety um and perhaps just need that little bit more encouragement and somebody to come alongside them in a more um moral support kind of way and we're more than happy to do that so you can um email me direct or um send your query into the um into the ask and i'll pick that up thanks for you just cut yourself up a little bit towards the end there but no worries at all there we go back on to me now okay guys so we've got a couple of financial support questions coming in now for our student services team let's get the first one as well there's eight questions here i can see in bulk uh, the first question is how do i access the college library how do i access the college library can i get can i take books out is there e-learning online can you direct Hi, Jimmy. I'll, I'll take that. Um, so accessing the library, when you first join in September, um, obviously you're enrolled and we'll give you a, an exceptional amount of paperwork and we give you um, a college ID card. And what we ask you to do is always carry that ID card wherever you go when in college, mainly for safeguarding, um, but also because it accesses so many services that we have at college. So it will get you things like um, if you have meals or be on your card, when you can go to the canteen, swipe your card. Um, if you want photocopying or printing, you use your card and swipe that. And if you use the library, then you can use your card to get out materials and your library books that you'll need for the academic year. Um, and as I said, it'll do your photocopying and your printing as well. Um, so that was basically how you access the library physically. What we also have are learning platforms, I suppose, ebooks and e-resources that you can access externally. So one of the things that we give you when you start college is your college email account. And uh, from that email account, you'll obviously have a username and password. And that username and password accesses not just your, your college email, 
um, but also your Moodle, also the ebook resources, um, electronic resources that we have online as well. So if we come to a condition where we're at home um, and you want to do your lesson, you want to do some study, then you can obviously do that from home as well with, and find the books and materials that you need. I hope that answers your question. Uh, back to you, Jimmy. Thanks, Donna. Perfect. Much appreciated. Okay. In fact, we've got one more, one more question I want to squeeze in for student services there. Uh, it's quite a good question, actually. This one is, uh, does the college have Wi-Fi? Does the college have Wi-Fi? Back to you, Donna, for this one, if that's okay. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, yes, the college does have Wi-Fi. It's throughout the building. Um, what will happen is, again, when you enrol, um, you're given your username and password. And that username and password is also access to the Wi-Fi as well. Um, we do have guides and so forth dotted around college that tells you actually how to access it. Um, but it's, it's fairly simple. You just find our network, you type in your details, your credentials, and where you go, you're on your Wi-Fi. So if you're in your lessons and you know the teacher might want to say, oh, uh, let's just do a quick search or a quiz or something, you know you can go to your Wi-Fi, access the information on there, and away you go. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. Spot on. Absolutely spot on, that's clear. Okay, guys, next question then. We've got loads coming in from a particular person I can see here, not gonna name them. Um, let's have a look. Uh, good question here, okay. I'm gonna start from the top of our questions. The qu first question is, are the courses free? Now, we're talking for person, is over the age of 18 now. Over the age of 18, are the courses free for them? Who wants to take that one for us? Again, it's quite a wide question, guys, so it's gonna be open format to everyone to answer that. Who wants to take that one for us first? Just, just say your name. I can see you there. Yeah. Can you see me? Oh. Hello. Regina, it's over to yeah. you. Just in terms of the functional skills, um, that those are free. The functional sk skills maths. That's a free course. Um, I'm not sure about the others. Um, if anyone else wants to comment on their course. Yep. Yeah, I'll um. Just clarify, yeah, functional skills courses are free, um, but ESOL courses, uh, some it will be free if you uh, are on um, a benefit claimant um, and if you are um, earning under 17,500. Um, but anything above that, um, there is a fee charged for the course. Uh, can I chip in there? If that's okay. It's, sorry, Donna. Um, one of the other things as well for um, ESOL applicants, um, which is uh, what Kieran said, is that yes, the courses for ESOL can come with a uh, charge and do get waived if you are like job seekers or employment uh, allowance or universal credit. Um, but we do have um, a bursary kind of support fund as well, um, discretionary learning support that you can apply for which is above the 17,500 that Karan uh, mentioned, but it's also under 21,000. So if you come into that category and you are working and you come in under 21,000, then you can actually apply for that support as well in order to waive the fees for the, um, the ESOL course. In terms of maths and English, usually those come in free and so do functional skills in English and maths as well. Hope that answers your question. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Donna. Thank you very much. Back over to myself. Okay. How long have we got, guys? We've got seven minutes left. In fact, no, we've got a few minutes because I've got to get through the bits as well at the same time. Let's just crack on with a few more bits. So, someone's asked for about an email address, a teacher's email address. We don't give out a teacher's email address. We're going to give out a general one, which is going to be at ask at bmet.ac.uk, as you guys can see on the screen there, the very bottom of the spotlight sign. Please get your queries into there. We've answered them today. The next question is, is there uniform at the college? Not specifically, guys, there's no uniform, so you can wear whatever you want. Just don't wear any hats for us, so guys. That's one of our policies not to wear hats. But you can, again, you can wear tracksuits. You can probably wear some nice trainers, maybe, a pair of jeans. Up to you what you wear. Keep it smart, keep it casual for us. That would be great. Okay, move on to the next question here. Uh, how hard are the assessments, guys? How hard are the assessments for all of our courses available? The foundation, we've got foundation learning assessments, Nahid, at all. Bottle over to you. Yeah, well, with foundation learning, <clears throat> we do have an initial assessment. We use BKSB for reading and writing skills. So for reading, to assess reading, we use BKSB test. And for writing, we have a free writing. So we give you a topic to write on. So that's how we assess your uh, reading and writing skills. And also we 
we do some communication to assess your spoken English as well. So we, we've got like some assessments, like asking um, some questions, basic questions, like what's your name? Where are you from? What are your hobbies? So yes, definitely we do have some uh, BKSB written and spoken assessments at BMET. Thank Thanks, you. Anyone else want to pop in there quickly before we finish up about that question there at all? Everyone cool? Okay. No, we're at all it's easy you know we assess your level it's easy nothing Brilliant. to worry about fantastic okay that's good to hear then that's good to hear you guys guys it is now five two we're going to try and squeeze one more quick question in if we can let's go up to the top i'm conscious i'm missing out a couple of questions that people have asked again guys if we're not answering your questions today please get them over to ask at bmet.ac.uk we can get them answered for you as well okay See what time it is now. Time 56. Okay, guys, tell you what, we have to get, give it a wrap there. Thank you very much for your, for your comments. Again, guys, get them into ask at uk, and we'll get them answered as soon as possible. Okay, folks, we're going to move on. Okay, guys, so at the college then, there's a whole student experience team who are on hand to help you and support you throughout college. If you need financial support, or would like help to see the college counsellor, mentor, or help to research in the Learning Resource Centre, which is called LRC, we are here to help. If you want to get involved with activities outside the classroom, each college has a variety of activities on offer. You can speak to the student experience officer when you join the college to find out more. Moving on to the next slide. So guys, if you want to find out more information about what's on offer across the wider BMET network, we've also got sites such as Sutton Coldfield College and James Watt, including Matthew Barton College we're talking about today. Head over to online to bmet.ac.uk to find out more information about the courses there. You can also apply online from there. So guys then, as you can't visit Matthew Barton College at the moment, we thought that would bring the college right to you, to your, to your doorstep, wherever you are, if you're in your bedroom, in the bathroom, you're outside, in the car maybe, or parked up, hopefully, of course. We're going to bring the college to you guys in a very short video we're going to show you now. Sit back, relax and enjoy. There we have you guys, hope you enjoyed that. So guys, thank you very much for joining today. If you are collecting your grades this summer, if you already have them, head over to our college website on bmet.ac.uk for a place at college this September. You'll be given a conditional offer and sent more information on how to enrol closer to the time. From all the team here at BMET today, from our foundation learning to ESAN to English and Maths, we hope you enjoyed this session and we look forward to welcoming you guys in September. Thank you. <laughs>